on the hour. Sponsored by Chick-fil-A. I'm Steve Futterman in Los Angeles. President Biden says Hurricane Ian could turn out to be the deadliest hurricane ever to hit Florida. The numbers of still are still unclear, but we're hearing early reports of what may be substantial loss of life. In the Sunshine State, they are looking for survivors and cleaning up. CBS's Manuel Bohorkas describes what it was like in Fort Myers. Linger so long. It was hours upon hours upon hours of just the worst parts of the hurricane. The priority today, of course, will not only be assessing the damage, but trying to rescue anybody who was caught in an area that is now inaccessible or flooded. Ian had been downgraded to a tropical storm. It's now back to a hurricane over the Atlantic. Next on its path, the Carolinas. I'm Jim Crisold in Greensboro, North Carolina. Ian is predicted to be a hurricane again as it takes aim at the South Carolina coast near Charleston on Friday. The entire South Carolina coast is under a hurricane warning. While much of North Carolina is under a tropical storm warning. There will be significant storm surge, strong winds, a tornado threat, and very heavy rain. Some places of the Carolinas could see a half a foot or more of rain. The Senate has approved a short-term spending bill that helps avert a partial government shutdown tomorrow. The bill funds the federal government through December 16th and gives Congress more time to finish its work setting spending levels for the new fiscal year. With some exceptions, this bill funds operations at current levels. Those exceptions include more than $12 billion to aid Ukraine and a $2 billion block grant for disaster assistance. It will next be up to the House to pass the bill before the current fiscal year ends at midnight Eastern Time Friday. Linda Kenyon, CBS News, Washington. The wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas has answered questions from the House January 6th Committee. CBS's Scott McFarland reports. Ginny Thomas, wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, did answer some questions during a marathon appearance before the House Select January 6th Committee behind closed doors doors. That's according to committee chairman Benny Thompson of Mississippi, who also said Ms. Thomas continued to express her belief the 2020 election was fraudulent. It was another down day on Wall Street. CBS's Jason Brooks explains stocks remain under pressure from rising treasury yields as government bonds sell off on recession fears. The Fed is expecting the unemployment rate to rise to 4.4 percent next year as it lifts rates higher to fight inflation, with strong wage growth helping push prices higher. So investors interpreted a drop in unemployment claims to an eight-month low as a catalyst for the Fed to keep raising rates. The Dow ended the day off 458 points. The Nasdaq lost more than 300. This is CBS News. Well, that's today's news. Today's news. I didn't hear any good news, did you? I didn't think so. I guess it's all about perspective. The glass is half full. Well, as always, I want to thank you again for coming along with me on these Dash Cam News Adventures. You know the drill. Peace, love, and all that hippie jazz. Bye-bye, everybody.